This is why you do strength training when you're getting ready for a western hunt. I've done a couple of earlier videos about conditioning. Basic level and kind of intermediate. This will be more of the advanced level. I got a cow elk this morning and I've switched packs. This is my Elf's Commander pack. I usually have my Everly Stock M5 and I can tell the weight, it carries a lot different on this one. But back to the fitness aspect of it, I've got a hind quarter, a back strap, and a tenderloin in this pack. I'm taking this elk out in three sections, I'm doing this all by myself. Thankfully, it's all downhill and I only have about a quarter mile to a truck. If I was doing a further distance, I would be breaking it down into much smaller pieces by a hind quarter at a time. Uh, do all the neck meat and the uh, trim meat, like the, the neck roast, do all that uh, separate and make four or even five trips out of it just because of the weight. But this is where your strength training really pays off doing the weighted squats. Uh, not necessarily super heavy, like I was saying in the intermediate video. This is one more where you want to have 40, 50 pounds, maybe 60 pounds, but you're doing a lot of reps. You're doing that 30, uh, 20, 30 reps at a time, and you're doing multiple sets of that, maybe three or four sets, um, you know, with that, and then uh, weighted lunges, working up into that. Your cardio is going to be a big one if you don't have cardio you really don't have a whole lot but you'll get some cardio out of the more extended uh, consecutive reps than what you do with the short reps because that's all about strength and not about cardio it doesn't take any cardio to do five reps or even ten reps so if you're really looking at getting serious about this western hunting thing Especially if you're going alone, uh, or even with a group. I mean, it's, you know, some of these guys. I had a fellow that I know. Him and his buddies packed 10 miles back into the Colorado wilderness this year. Never saw an elk, uh, and so they came out empty. But had they got one down, that's 10 miles that they have to pack out, go back in, and pack out their camp. So I think there's three, maybe four guys. So each guy, even if they bone it out, is gonna be carrying a minimum of 40 pounds uh, of meat probably per load if they split all that up equally into one trip. Especially on a bull, this is a cow and she's fairly heavy. Uh, lie weight, she's probably five, maybe 600 pounds. Uh, a bull will be bigger. You know, getting more to that six to eight hundred pound mark. So, but doing the doing a lot of cardio. You know, I see the advanced training on the cardio is at least five miles. It's kind of the end of the intermediate, beginning of the uh, advanced. And as you can get eight, ten, twelve miles in, it sounds like a lot, but I tell you what, it will pay off. When you get out here last year was the first year that i did eight mile an eight mile run i had been doing some four and five mile runs before that and i did the jump from five to eight and that really took a toll on the joints i was sore for three or four days had a hard time walking just my body wasn't used to that pounding especially on concrete um, so don't try to go too fast on it go one mile at a time or maybe even half mile at a time when you're working on that whole cardio thing. And then the strength training. You know, gotta have both. This is where it pays off in the backcountry. Thankfully, I don't have a steep uphill to get to the animal. But I'll finish this video up here later after I get this thing packed out and I'm cleaned up. And then we'll see how things go. And this is what a full-size elk hindquarter looks like in relation to a tailgate. 
Okay, so there's a 120 quart cooler right behind it. It is as long as a 120 quart cooler and at least six to eight inches deep. So you got your sticker on the cooler. So it's probably six inches deep. Um, that gives you an idea how big these things are. Now remember that's got the back strap sitting in the tenderloin. Well, one back strap, one tenderloin at. Uh, each back strap is probably in the area of about three feet long. So um, I think this pack was probably around 50 pounds. And so even though I haven't got everything out yet, I wanted to do this particular video while it was on my mind, getting into that more advanced training is the backpack um, hike with it i've been running around these mountains so, see this is october 30th since september 5th with a pack on my back a 20 to 30 pound pack i won't say every day but it's uh, i think i did 20 let's see about 25 days in september for archery and bear no, sorry, bear, bear was in uh, October. Um, so 25 days in September guiding archery hunters. I did a couple days in uh, early October for bear. And then from the 10th of October until now, the 30th, almost every day has been guiding hunters and packing with 20, 30 pounds on my back. Um, I haven't done really any pack outs we did get no the, we got one deer and that was right by the truck so we just picked that up and threw it in uh, we didn't even quarter out the elk we quartered out and we there was so much snow and rain we just drug it down the hill uh, in the game bags and threw it on horses so that wasn't really a pack out either as far as going on my back this thing coming down the hill remember i'm only coming a quarter mile i can already feel my hips getting sore and I've got two more trips to make. One that's as heavy as this load and one that's even heavier because it's two uh, front quarters together. And so I'm probably going to do that one next because it's going to be the heaviest and it's starting to warm up out here. And uh, the trail's getting a little bit sloppy, so I want the heaviest load to be while I still have some firm footing. But it, when you're training, throw some weight on your back. Um, start, start low like everything else. Start with low weight, work your way on up, but get it to where you're carrying those heavier loads and uh, you know, work your body up to it because it's not something that you want to just pick up and run with. Uh, and the other thing is the pack. I don't think that my M5 pack would cause me as much pain as this uh, Elf's Commander pack. There's something about the way that it sits and digs into my hips that I really feel... Um, and it might just be the way that that shelf folds down and that's digging right in there into my hips and that's what's making them hurt. I don't know uh, because I've hauled a lot of weight on my M5 before just as much as this and it did not hurt my hips the way that this does. So pack choice, be wise, get some advice from people that have packs, whether it's for me or there's a plethora of other people on YouTube and online and the forums and um, the best thing to do is find somebody that's got some packs, try them on, throw some weight on it, go walk a quarter or a half mile, see how it feels, and, and uh, make your own decision. So, I'm get back at it, get the rest of the thing out. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, well, I got the elk all the way out. And I had to switch packs uh, to my usual M5. Just because that one was really digging in my hip. So, I used that in the last pack out on this uh these really heavy loads i ended up splitting the two front quarters one went on my back and i bear hugged the other one because of the short distance it's not that big of a deal but that could go into your uh, fitness workout bear hugging you know what this is the quarter i was using right here i just bear hug it lock my hands together that helps with the the weight uh, using more pressure to hold it into your body than your arm strength so a quarter mile down the hill uh, i didn't even have to stop once which was nice 
but every time you stop and unload and reload you're using up a lot of energy uh, and you can especially on those heavy loads like that like that whole load was probably 70 pounds maybe 80 pounds by the time you split them up they've got the neck roast on each one of them uh, those front shoulder and neck roast combined i didn't i didn't separate them um, <clears throat> Oh, but be careful when you're doing that even if you're in that more advanced workout remember your core that's another big thing um, when you get that much weight on your back especially older folks but it can happen to, to younger guys too or gals um, if you move wrong or twist wrong and your core muscles aren't strong by the time you get to the uh advanced workouts you should be doing a lot of core strengthening anyways but keep in mind that those heavy loads on your back it doesn't take a whole lot just the wrong twist and the wrong move can throw everything out and then you're in a world of hurt especially if you're in the back country a long ways um you're coming out you know if you've got to bring a camp out or anything like that uh, you're gonna have a really hard time i've injured my back multiple times uh, sprained it strained it pulled it uh, about everything you can do besides break it probably and it, it, it really lays you out so keep that in mind uh, hope you guys do well on your your hunts and just remember to go within your ability don't push it too hard you know go right up to that edge but don't don't go over it if you think it's too heavy it probably is split the load up it's better to make two trips that are safe as opposed to one trip that's risky you know, so thankfully I was able to get out of here before it got too muddy. And so I didn't have any problem with traction coming down the hill, even carrying 70 or 80 pounds. So I hope this helps you out as always. I don't know how many videos there are out there like this that are on the practical scale. So if you like it, let me know. Shoot me a comment. And uh, until next time, happy hunting.